we're going to talk a little bit about troughing. Now, troughing is a technique that you can employ to just about any extraction. Now, you may choose to use it right from the get-go in certain situations. One situation might be an impacted third molar, and you'll see oral surgeons doing this lots. They lay a flap, and they cut that ditch or that trench around the buccal portion of that impacted tooth. The purpose of that is to get the elevator more deeply seated and access a good purchase point where they can then fulcrum off the bone and they have no more bony interferences to the path of withdrawal for that tooth after they take that bone away. So same idea in other parts of the mouth. So in order to get a tooth out, sometimes you either have to make the piece smaller or the hole bigger. Now, in this case, we're usually going to be making a little bit of a trench around the tooth, and we're actually making the tooth a little bit smaller and the hole a little bit bigger, usually at the expense of the tooth more so than the bone if possible. So the technique is to use your surgical handpiece, uh, one that doesn't vent air into your surgical site. You want to have a surgical length burr, and this one on here is a 700 burr. You could use a 701 or even a 699 burr. The 700 is just a nice fit, though, for this luxator that I use. So I have an EL3SX elevating luxator. It's a 3 millimeter tip. Basically slides directly into that trough that I make with this burr and allows me to firmly engage whatever is remaining in the tooth structure, and I can then deliver it much easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to examine some situations where we might use this. So one situation would be you've taken out this upper first molar, but the palatal root fractured off. Now the palatal root, unfortunately, is not loose. So it's still there. It's very tightly bound to the bone, and there's really nowhere left to grab with your forcep because it's about even with the crestal bone. So our step here would be to take this 700 burr, and we're going to cut along the palatal root basically circumferentially all the way down along there making sure that you're taking care not to get close to the adjacent roots here if you are choosing to go interproximally. You could stick just to the buccal and palatal to be safe and what you want to do is you want to sink this burr at least to the depths of the flutes probably more down to about where the um, little bevel comes into the uh, burr here. Okay, so you're going to go down probably five, six millimeters along that root, and you're going to do it, at, like I said, at the expense of the root more so than the bone. So kind of like a crown prep. So if you imagine cutting into that tooth, making a little bit of a ledge all the way around it, what you're doing is creating space for this instrument, and you're relieving a little bit of the bony obstruction around that root tip. So after we do that, we go in here, we sink that all the way down, we're fairly aggressive with it. Make sure that you're trying to stay on the angulation of that root. If you can tell from your PA that you had previously what that is, it's usually probably leaning a little bit distally. Try to angle your burr that way as to again stay away from these adjacent roots. Once that's finished, what we do is we go down the long axis of that root with our elevating luxator and we can get in there, basically work it down along the tooth until we get a good enough purchase that we can lift it out of there. Now, that's a great way to go for that situation. Another situation, maybe say you've got a um, premolar on the bottom here. Let's take this out. Say that we've broken off a root tip down here. Now, the root tip is down in the socket. We have good visibility, but there's too much there to leave. So let's say we've got at least a third of that root left, maybe more and it really hasn't been luxated, that tooth just had fractured on you. Same thing, you're gonna take this 700 burr, and you can either split this mesiodistally, which you could do with this burr, we've talked about that in other videos, and then take those two pieces out separately, or you can trough alongside it. So again, make sure in this case that you're aware of any critical anatomy, which would be this mental foramen. So you may wanna stay clear of that area, which you'll be able to see on the PA. And that goes for anywhere in the mouth. Don't be troughing in places where you're going to be approaching critical anatomy. So this here, we're going to go down around the root again. We're going to be going mainly mesial and distal in this case. And we are going to be cutting again at the expense of that root tip. And we're going to try to sink this down a fair ways. If you don't sink it far enough, what's going to happen is if you go down, say, two or three millimeters, you're going to put this in and you're going to start pushing on there and it's just going to go snap and you're just going to break off the next chunk of tooth. And it's again going to be just flush with the bone. There's no high sides to work at or anywhere to engage. And then you got to go back and you got to do it again. So it takes a while to get used to being more aggressive with these, but you want to do a deep cut first so that you pick it up once do it once and that's it. So be deliberate with your motions and deliberate with your actions to ensure that you're being as efficient as possible.
Now, those are two situations. You can do this in any situation. Like I said, another time where you might use troughing would be if you have a tooth up here, upper second molar, maybe there's lots of bone around it, the patient's got a heavy bite, and you're worried about a tuberosity fracture up here. So let's say maybe even over here where we've got a tooth missing, it's kind of a lone molar at the back, sinus has somewhat pneumatized down around there. You have to take a look at that PA to see exactly where the sinus is. You may want to measure your burr and get a gauge for how long these flutes are and kind of how far you can cut into there before you're getting close to that sinus. So do that on your PA and then transfer it to the mouth. What you can do in these is you can raise a little bit of a flap or sometimes I'll even do these flapless. You again cut down alongside the tooth and make kind of a distal buccal gutter or a trough around here to just free up all the tooth there and try to get it separated from the tuberosity before you get putting any pressures on it. So that's a nice thing that you can do to kind of save yourself a little bit and try to prevent one of those complications from happening. So again, all different applications. Anytime you're stuck and you can't get a grasp with a forcep or a good purchase with an elevator, 700 Burr and the EL3SX Elevating Luxator are terrific tools. Even if you have, say, like a marginally loose root tip, maybe you can't get your Elevating Luxator in there, but you have a high brink root tip pick or a root tip pick that you like, and you need to get a little purchase on there on that root tip, you can do the same thing. You can just trough in just a little section of that root to allow you to get in there and flick that out. Super handy technique to know. It's going to change the way that you take out teeth.